Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Stephen Williams, founder and president of the CreditRepairShop.com. I got some a little update on Santander. Uh, number one, I want to say that this company is really running rings around the legal system with all of the loopholes with the settlement. I want to talk about this right here. Uh, what I had found online, just doing some research, trying to find out what other uh, people are running into. And this was one of them right here that I saw right here. It says, Moon says she called Florida Attorney General's office Tuesday for an update, but the staff there urged her to be persistent. Look at that. The Attorney General staff said be persistent with following up, follow-ups to the company, to Santander. Be persistent. So, if the attorney general cannot make them move the way that they should move, how can anyone, they, they, when they did this settlement, there was a loophole in there and no one saw it, but I'm pretty sure the attorney, the attorneys for Santander knew it, uh, that they were going to be 100% in control of the outcome on this. So now look at this. Uh, she said that she called the state after Santana employer employees told her this is all very new to us and we'll be in touch. That's really not good enough. Now, let's see here. Connecticut Attorney General, he's just saying, hey, call Santander. And uh, people are saying that they're, when they called her, they feel mistreated, all types of stuff. They, some people said that they felt mistreatment when they called their attorney general's office, that their attorney general's office wasn't even, uh, you know, uh, as helpful as you thought that they would be. And then there's another spot on here that I wanted to show you where it was. It said that Santander is the one that's going to admit, here it is right here. It falls on Santander to administer the agreement. You give the people who did this to the people the power to administer the agreement. So that that was the loophole. They're going to just do, send out, uh, uh, they're going to settle with people on their terms. And what we've been seeing happen when they, when on their terms is, even though you may have your vehicle paid off under the terms of the agreement, settlement agreement we are going to make you have to pay payments and if you don't pay payments until we get to your filed your case your settlement and finalize it we can come and take your car and put that down as a repo that is what's happening to people so now what i want to do is take you to another website that i found something that i hope will be helpful to everyone who sees it uh, hold on one second. Let me make sure I'm at the right spot. Okay, this is a website. It's called Fair Shake. So fairshake.com. The link will be below this video, but look at this right here. Because a lot of people always, you know, not always, but a lot of people say, where is the link? The link is right here, fairshake.com. You see it? And I'll put the link below the video. This is what this has came to for suing Santander because they know uh, the even this this organization knows that it is very tough dealing with this company and what they did is they've actually put together a page on their website to show people how to do a, a lawsuit and they have two ways uh, small claims court or consumer arbitration now I want you to go here and you can you can read and see what this is all about. But what caught my attention is that they said among the 261 complaints, 259 Santander Consumer USA complaints resulted in a settlement between the company and the consumer. That's 99% of the complaints. So they lost 99% of the complaints and the average compensation was $1,640. But, and, and so one of the things that I'm, that I've been telling everyone that's watching these Santander videos is that you're going to have to work for what you get. 
the first thing was you need to send the demand letters. And I'm, let me back up here because I'm going to show you. So you know that I was not leading you down the wrong trail. So with this service here called Fair, Fair uh, Shake, look at the first thing that they said here. And I swear to you, I didn't see this. And also here's an address that you can send it to. But also you need to send it to the Texas address. But look at this. What is the first thing they tell you to do? Well, the second thing after you decide what what you want from here is send a demand letter. What are your demands to see if they will voluntarily fix the problem that you're complaining about? That's what this whole thing was about to get things started. You you can't even really uh, start a lawsuit without having some type of demands and given and then when you give them the opportunity to uh respond to the demand and it can take some time it's not going to always come you know so fast but you send your demand and then the next steps would be to file a complaint and to sue them in court this is exactly the flow chart that right here uh i'm glad i found this because this will help a lot of you out uh, you got number one, be sure that your, your, your claim qualifies for small claims court, which it would for most of you because you either uh, have a vehicle and you feel like you were wrong, you uh, either have debt that was uh, on, on that vehicle and you feel like you want to get that debt based, I mean, get the car and the title based on the, on the uh, uh, settlement. Now, I don't advise you to use this method if you already lost the car because you'll be able to get that information off of your credit reports. And if you, but you can use this method if you want to try to seek some type of compensation because what it states right here is when people, right here when uh, maybe you want compensation for overcharges, fraudulent sales tactics collection issues, impacts on your credit, uh, you can sue for that and they may just want to pay you just to make you be quiet uh, and, you know, and stop complaining. You know, com big companies do do that. They do that a lot. And when you're looking at it, $1,640, that's about what they probably pay some of their top attorneys per hour. So they would rather just go ahead and settle this rather than dragging something out and getting it all reported into the news. So what I want everyone to do, and it says here the average time is eight months. So everyone that writes on there, which I appreciate the majority of people, but I've had, I have had some impatient people uh, that did demand letters and they think that it was going to happen overnight or real quick. It's in their hands. But even when you follow the courts and you do this in court or you do arbitration, they're saying that it could take over eight months to resolve. So no matter what you do, my way, this way, your own way, you're going to work to get the result you want. And the people who scream at them the most are going to be the ones who end up getting uh, some type of settlement, something. Uh, it says here that if when they did the arbitration, Santander paid 720 in fees per complaint. So they don't even want to look at that. So if you look at them thinking that they could lose off of what the settlement was all about, you can see why Santander would just rather, uh, if if the demand letter is done right, and you know, and and they deal with everyone that uh, that they don't want to deal with, they do whatever with them, and then they they start to look at the people who are barking at them, who's making noise, sending demands, threatening to sue, filing complaints with the consumer divisions, who's doing all of that. Those are the people that are going to get taken care of. Because there's way more than 259 uh, people uh, or 261 people in 2018 that could have filed a complaint. But a lot of people just don't want to put in the work to get it done. So uh, 
I hope this is uh, going to help you if you have situation with Santander. Go to this website, and, and you can either get some information from it on what you might want to do, or you can make sure that you get the demand letter. I'll put the links below here for the demand letter. But take action. Don't let this company win. We can see that they're getting over even on the attorney generals. Look at that. It falls on Santander to administer the agreement. That's like saying when you lose in court, they'll let the person who lost in court determine how they're going to administer uh, their uh, the relief to people that they harm. So uh, hopefully this is helpful to you. This is Stephen Williams, founder and president of the CreditRepairShop.com, and thank you for your time.